The God's Dream and Other Witch Old Tales Gabriela Olmos Art by Maracame Huichol José Benítez Sánchez At the beginning, there was only the ocean. In the ocean, the gods lived. And the gods could dream. Only that was necessary for life to begin. I'm getting tired of only being in the water, Takutsi said one time. Takutsi, who will later become the great-grandmother of all Huicholes. My skin is all wrinkled of being here. And not only that, I have even learned to do some magic tricks. Look how I can turn my eyes around and how I take my heart out and pull it back inside again. And all the gods started laughing. I'm also bored with water, complained Maxaquaxi, who did not know he would become our grandfather dear tail. There's only ocean and more ocean. The other day I dreamt about a place we can go when we get out of here, interrupted Kaoyomari, the youngest and perhaps the smartest of all. It was a dry and luminous place, near the place where a giant shiny ball, which we will call Sun, will be born. How are we going to get to that place if it doesn't exist? You only dreamed about it, Kaoyomari, replied Maxaquaxi. Sometimes the oldest insist on making fun of the words from the youngest. But how do you know it doesn't exist if we haven't searched for it? It was then when the gods started walking, and with their steps they began to create the world. First they made the beach with sand and colorful seashells. And since they saw it was fun, they felt happy, and they moved forward. Then they created the flowers, the trees, the ponds, and the frogs. And when they heard them croak, they laughed so much that they thought everything was going all right. And they moved forward. They also created the cliffs, the slopes, the rocky formations, and everything we can see. Every now and then, some of them got tired of this walking, because creating the world is not that easy. One must be where no one has left their footprints, and that requires a lot of effort. However, since the rest did not want to stop, they were left on the road, and they, to embellish the world, would turn into water springs, hills, and even old trees, those who look like they have always been there. Everything would have turned just perfect, and the gods would have arrived without a problem to the desert where later the sun would rise, if Maxaquaxi hadn't had a nightmare. I dreamed with some giants, he said as he woke up alarmed. They were a bit full, but they had some instruments with which they could get easier to the place we want to reach. And since they had learned that everything you dream may come true, they were not surprised when the giants appeared in the world. Look at them! They have feathered sticks and some gourds, Kaoyumari called the attention from the gods with a soft voice so that the giants would not know that the gods were spying on them. Surely all these instruments are really powerful. Hey, I'm sure they aren't, Maxaquax interrupted. Then why, if they are so full, they have got this far? We should steal them so that we can travel faster. I have an idea, yelled Takutsi suddenly, and everybody made her lower her voice. Let's teach them to take their hearts out. They will learn it's so much fun. The giants loved their proposal. They had never seen anything like that. Takutsi turned her head around. She could make one of her feet look forward and the other backwards. She played with her eyes as if they had springs and she pulled her heart out. And the giants copied her clumsily, although slowly, because after each trick they stopped to laugh for a while, just like fool people do when they believe something is going right. Finally, we made it, yelled Kaoyumari when she discovered that the giants had tried to pull their hearts out. And they suffered from pain, because that was only a privilege for Takutsi. I also dreamed about it, Maxaquatz exclaimed, full of joy, while the gods stole the gourds and the feathered sticks that later would become their sacred instruments. 
The gods didn't take long to learn to do their rituals with those instruments recently stolen. They moved their feather sticks while they thought of all that could make them happy. They made offerings with arrows and gourds, and they even learned to sing. As for the giants, what a pity. They are still trying to learn to do Takutsi's tricks with no success. Maybe when they succeed, they will open a circus, or perhaps they decide to continue walking towards the east. Some people think that it was thanks to their prayers that the gods could reach the desert where the sun comes out. There is no doubt that their rituals helped them to reach their destiny. But the gods would have never seen the sunrise if they hadn't been bored that day in the ocean, and above all, if they hadn't dared to dream of